You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the guns, the drugs, the my generation will take the fall. The saints will cross the nation dead. It's a sex, the gods, the freaks, the frogs, the messing with me. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get it out. Move to the music, play that fucking music. Live through my music, yeah. Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 19th of April 1999. Hope you guys had a great Christmas and I hope you enjoyed the New Year celebrations. But it's back to serious horseman business here at RTW headquarters. Ross coming from Grand Rapids, Michigan tonight while WCW Nitro takes place in Gainesville, Florida. We're just six days away from backlash and work was completed over the Christmas break to make sure that video gets to you guys on schedule. WCW meanwhile are still trying to work through this new rebranding of theirs so God knows what we're going to see tonight. So let's get started and let's see what's happening. Goldberg arrives to the arena and he immediately announces our Nitro main event, DDP vs Goldberg for the World Heavyweight Championship. That's a pretty big match to give away for free, but I'll take it. Tony Schiavone confirms that the match will happen tonight, and he also says Scott Steiner is going to defend his US title against Conan. That match doesn't happen by the way, but more on that later. The Nitro opening match featured Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit taking on the Armstrong brothers. You can tell the horsemen wanted to give the Armstrongs a lot of time to get their stuff in, and the brothers did look good from bell to bell, but Benoit and Malenko were always going to win. Scott Armstrong topped out the Malenko's cloverleaf. Roddy Piper's at Nitro tonight. Some rando hands Piper what looks like a contract, and Piper's surprised that the contract's been signed. We'll find out a bit more about this too a little later on. Macho Man Randy Savage and Gorgeous George arrive to the building, but the evil Doug Dillinger tries to keep Mach from entering. Doug's under strict rules from President Flair not to allow Randy and his girl in the Nitro tonight, but Commissioner Roddy Piper shows up and he tells Doug to let Savage and George in. Roddy also mentioned here that Flair might not be president of WCW for much longer. DDP comes out for an interview and he sends his best wishes to Hulk Hogan. Hogan's getting surgery this week apparently and Paige hopes for a speedy recovery. Mean Gene reminds everyone that it was Dallas who injured Hogan in the first place. In regards to Goldberg, Paige repeats what he said about Sting last week when he says he sees a lot of himself in Bill Goldberg. And just like last week, Paige also says he won't be defending the belt tonight on Nitro. Goldberg then comes to the ring and all it takes is a face to face confrontation for Paige to change his mind. The two competitors scream at each other while Mean Gene gets out of the ring. We can tell that the match has now been accepted, so DDP vs Goldberg is definitely on for the Nitro main event. The limousine riding, jet flying, surge sipping, bad match bringing, David Flair then signs whatever piece of paper Roddy Piper was handed earlier. Piper mentions it's only for a 72 hour observation and young David seems happy to sign off on this observation, whatever it is. Mean Gene then confirms with DDP that the title match is going to happen later tonight. Page says yes and he reminds fans of how good Goldberg vs DDP was back at Halloween Havoc. Mean Gene then wants Dallas to watch a video of Hogan getting injured at Spring Stampede and DDP doesn't watch it, he decides to walk away instead. Back in the ring, we have a four-way cruiserweight title match, champion Rey Mysterio defending against Psychosis, Blitzkrieg and Juventud Guerrera, but fuck that nonsense because look who's back baby. Alex Wright's back on Nitro and he's going for some new alternative look. The bratwurst has gotten so big that it's taken over his brain. This is what happens when it gets super super massive guys, so be careful. Good to see Alex back and I can't wait to see what he's gonna do next. I expect his dance to reappear next week. The action in the ring was insanely good here and take a look at Blitzkrieg, my god. 
Tony Schiavone wasn't sure what to call this and he stopped after saying it was spinning, turning and twisting. The whole match was one big highlight reel and I'm not exaggerating either. Hoovy and Blitzkrieg in particular were really good here but the clear fan favourite was Rey Mysterio. The match ended when Juventud and Rey dumped each other out of the ring and Psychosis hit a leg drop on Blitzkrieg. Psychosis wins the match and the Cruiserweight title and I'm actually really happy for Psychosis seeing he's been in WCW for quite some time and he's always been consistent, way more consistent than Juventud Guerrera for example. I already know this is going to be match of the week for me but we've still got a lot to cover on this episode of Reliving the War. By the way, I want to say hi to my one little fan out there. Hello, Smokey, my cat. The Rock opens up Raw this week with a promo while over on Nitro, Ric Flair has something to say. There's a burial site placed right beside the Raw arena this week and we have got The Rock driving a hearse into the arena. The Great One grabs a microphone, he says he threw Austin and his belt over Rudy Poo Bridge last week and that means Steve Austin is never coming back. The Rock buried Austin's title, he buried Austin's career, so tonight on Raw, The Rock's gonna, and I quote, bury Austin's monkey ass. We, we've got a casket here for Stone Cold, we've got flowers, tonight there's gonna be a funeral and The Rock's gonna read Stone Cold's eulogy at the end of the show. Austin will be buried tonight and if Austin can make it to Backlash this Sunday, The Rock's gonna prove that he's the best damn WWF champion there ever was. Yeah, I'm not sure how Austin's gonna show up to Backlash if he ends up getting buried by The Rock but these small details do not matter in the slightest. Something's gonna go down tonight on Raw and I'm already looking forward to it. We get a sneak peek of what to expect tonight on Raw, we've got Vince McMahon getting interviewed about his son Shane, we're gonna see Big Boss Man vs Ken Shamrock and we've also we got Mankind vs Triple H, sounds like a good one. On Nitro, Ric Flair begins his promo in standard nature boy fashion. He says he's going to buy everyone around a drinks in Gainesville because he's the president of WCW and he can do what he wants. And that's when Roddy Piper walks down to the ring to give Slick Rick some bad news. Flair wonders why Piper always has to show up when the lights are shining bright on the nature boy and Piper says it's over, Flair's lost control and something needs to be done. Piper says Flair's acting like the Dennis Rodman of WCW, he's signing papers without checking them over, he's hiring people, he's firing people, he's lost his son, he's out here telling the fans he's gonna buy them drinks when in reality he's gonna sneak out of the arena and fly out to the next venue. Ric Flair is a horrible president and his run at the very top of WCW is over. Flair's sick, Flair's lost and Piper's asking Ric as a friend to step down. Flair says no, he's the president, he's Ric Flair dammit, and he'll do whatever he wants. He throws his shoes into the crowd when reminded of the time he hit someone in the audience doing the exact same thing. When Piper reminds Flair about the time he handcuffed himself to the top rope in his underwear, Flair says he'll do it again and he strips down to his gator boxers. You know something, I think the crowd were supposed to be behind Roddy Piper here but they're going nuts for Slick Rick. Rick says he's president of the United States and Mean Gene has to correct him. He begins losing the plot while nation in his underwear. Piper says he didn't want to do this but he produces that piece of paper from earlier on and he tells Mean Gene to read it out to the audience. Piper's petition to have Flair removed from his post due to being incompetent. It's been co-signed by David Flair. Ric Flair is incapable of exercising rational judgement and he represents a foreseeable risk of harm to his own well-being and the company's well-being. Flair's being legally removed from office, it also sounds like he's going to be observed as we learned earlier on. He's also going to face Kevin Nash tonight on Nitro seeing as he signed the match contract without paying attention to it. And while Ric Flair says Roddy Piper's fired, there's also going to be a Ric Flair vs Roddy Piper match taking place at Slamboree. If Piper beats Flair then the hot rod can take over as president of WCW. Yeah, I, I know it's kinda random but just go with it, there's no point questioning these things anymore. Flair gets decked before Nitro takes a commercial break so there you go, looks like Flair's being pushed out and we'll have a new authority figure in WCW very soon. 
Backstage, Conan bumps into the NWB team and Stevie Ray informs him that Kevin Nash wants a chat. Conan says he doesn't run with the wolf pack anymore so he wants nothing to do with Big Sexy and this leads to K-Dog getting jumped by what remains of the New World Order. Looks like Conan's US title shot might be in jeopardy. The Road Dog Jesse James takes on Owen Hart next on Raw. On Nitro, a hardcore hack vs Brian Knobs. My god. Owen and Jared face the New Age Outlaws this week at Backlash. The winners become number one contenders for the tag team championships, but Road Dog wants a stipulation added to this singles match. If Road Dog beats Owen Hart, then Deborah has to <coughs> show the puppies. Deborah doesn't say yes or no to this stipulation. Instead, Owen goes on offense right away, but he gets stopped in his tracks with a dancey punch and a dancey knee. Owen's annoyed that his brother doesn't say shut up the road dog anymore so he takes matters into his own hands. Jesse James falls victim to a spinning wheel kick and an enziguri and things look bleak for the roadie when the king of hearts delivers an elbow drop. Owen then screams shut up as he tries to lock in the sharpshooter but Jesse kicks hard away and we see the pump handle slam. Road dog wins via pinfall and it looks like Deborah's happy enough to get in the ring and show off her big mama jammas. Jeff Jarrett runs down to put an end to this debauchery, the crowd show their displeasure, but all you horn dogs needn't worry because Deborah gets another chance to show off her assets a little later on. On Nitro, I don't even know what's going on here. Brad Nobbs has appeared from nowhere and it looks like he's going to be part of WCW's hardcore division. I never was a big fan of the Nasty Boys even as a youngster so I can't really say I care all that much about Brian's return. It's funny too, I commented last week about how WCW did a good job of keeping lower card guys off an entire 3 hour broadcast, but now we've got the Armstrongs and Brian Nobbs wrestling in throwaway matches. If you're a fan of Brian Nobbs then I do apologize, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend to enjoy stuff. In saying that, these kind of hardcore matches suit him way way more than standard one on one matches. Not much has changed in regards to how Brian works and how he carries himself, so if Nobbs had to come back to Monday Night Television, I I probably would have thrown him in the hardcore division too. Would I book him to beat the Sandman? Oh, fuck it. Would I book him to beat Hardcore Hack? Absolutely not. But Brian did get the win here following interference from Bam Bam Bigelow. This Bigelow and Hack feud doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. So yeah, there you have it. Brian Nobbs defeats Hack on Nitro. Whoopity do. The Rock's backstage rehearsing his eulogy for tonight. He wants to do Stone Cold Proud and there's no doubt in my mind that the Great One's gonna knock it out of the park tonight. The Undertaker tells the Acolytes to take care of the Brood because the Ministry have big plans tonight and the faction can't afford to waste any more time on Edge, Gangrel and Christian. For some reason this meeting took place in an empty cargo trailer, it's kinda weird. On Raw then, it's the Acolytes vs The Brood in a tag team match. On Nitro, we've got promos from the Macho Man Randy Savage and the NWOB team. We've got a gut wrench powerbomb from Farouk followed by a spinning wheel kick from Edge. The future rated R superstar then gets planted with a big old spine buster before Gangrel and Bradshaw take over. Bradshaw is very aggressive tonight but he gets knocked down a few pegs following a tornado DDT. He replies with a full away slam before he and Farouk team up for a back suplex cutter combo and there's a chin lock from big Farouk. Farouk remembers the good old days. Edge gets a hot tag but he's unable to build any momentum. A clothesline from Bradshaw gets followed up with a double powerbomb from the Acolyte that look like it hurt a lot. But look, here comes good guy Ken Shamrock with his trusty baseball bat. Bradshaw takes a few shots while the referee deals with Gangrel, Farouk and Christian on the outside. But for some reason, the Brood aren't allowed to score a pinfall win here. The match just ends, even though the referee didn't see a thing. Backstage, The Undertaker's pissed off that the Acolytes couldn't get the job done. And during a commercial break, Bradshaw and Farouk paid for letting the team down by taking a beating from Big Viz and the dead man himself. I'd tell The Undertaker to shove his higher power up his hole at this point. Imagine letting your faction leader slap you about like this. On Nitro, Randy Savage says Ric Flair is trying to make things difficult for the Macho Man. This is the most important time in Randy's career, apparently, and Flair's trying to sabotage the return of the madness. Gorgeous George, with zero match experience, is going to take on Charles Robinson and if George can beat the referee then Randy's back in WCW full time, so Macho's brought someone in to train George. Randy says Medusa here is the greatest women's champion ever and nobody rose to the occasion quite like Medusa. And Medusa says Gorgeous George will be ready at Slamboree. 
She says she always wanted to wrestle a man, but she was unable to do so during her tenure in WCW. This is going to change very soon, by the way, but for now, Medusa's happy that the quote cavemen of WCW are finally recognizing women. Medusa's back to make a statement, and I guess we're just going to completely ignore that retirement match from Great American Bash 97. Kevin Nash approaches the NWO backstage and he doesn't seem happy with these boys taking out Conan earlier. Stevie says they delivered Nash's message while Kevin says there was no message. But before this can get settled, Scotty Steiner walks in and he wants to speak with Big Sexy. Scott's not happy that Kimberly hit him last week with a steel chair, so Scott wants Kevin to give up his world title shot at Slamboree and hand it over to the big bad booty daddy. Nash says, nah, I'm not giving up my shot, and Scott says Kev's gonna have a big problem if he doesn't do what he's told. Steiner walks away, and the NWO say they know what Nash is up to, the NWO know what Nash is doing behind their backs, and it's over. Nash says none of these scrubs want a piece of big sexy, so they better remember who they're talking to. When Nash walks away, the NWO decide they're going to send Scott Norton out to face Scott Steiner tonight for the US title. They're not happy with how Steiner barged into their locker room. So it's just more NWO nonsense right here because no one knows how to end this thing. The whole group and the whole storyline's now on life support and no one has it in them to turn the machine off. Disco fever. Yeah, yeah. The Godfather defends his IC title against Hardcore Holly next on Raw. On Nitro, it's Buff Bagwell vs Disco Inferno. Bagwell issues a challenge to Scotty Steiner before locking horns with Disco. Bagwell vs Steiner, it's Slamboree for the US title. Buff says Scott's big, he's bad, but he's not buff and he's not the stuff. Disco Inferno's wearing his NWO shirt again tonight. One week he's wearing it, the next he isn't. He lays the boots in right at the opening bell, but Bagwell shows off some of that babyface fire with a hip toss, a scoop slam and a dropkick that sends Disco to the outside. Bagwell shows off his guns while Disco recuperates. Disco then tries a hip toss of his own and he gets stumped out of the ring once again. But this time Buff gets his neck dropped across the top rope and Disco follows up with a swing and neck breaker back inside the ring. The Inferno keeps the pressure on Bagwell's neck as Alex Wright watches on. Alex is clearly here to support his dancing fool's tag team partner. Buff takes a clothesline followed by a body slam. The Inferno then goes upstairs but he misses his diving elbow drop. This gives Buff another chance to fire up and he hits Disco with a backdrop and a power slam before going for a blockbuster. Disco stops it, the Inferno goes for his finish but Bagwell counters with a running blockbuster. Buff Daddy scores the win on Monday Nitro. No matter what you may think about Bagwell, the dude really had his timing down. Whether he's working as a heel or a babyface, he knows when to pick up the pace and equally as important, he knows when to let things simmer. I firmly believe that the WWF would have signed Buff up if he became available around this time period, but Buff Daddy had a nice contract and he was in no hurry to leave WCW. This week at Backlash, Al Snow wrestles Bob Holly for the Hardcore belt while Goldust gets a rematch against the Godfather for the IC belt, so you shouldn't be surprised when the challengers interfered in this match. This wasn't a hardcore bout, it was a one on one encounter for the IC title, but it quickly devolved into a hardcore match when the referee took a bump. Holly was able to use a bacon tray on the IC champion and on the outside he broke a broomstick over Godfather's back. The Godfather was able to get a boot up though when Holly came at him with a steel chair, but then Goldust appeared and he broke up the Godfather's pin attempt. Not sure why he would do this since he was guaranteed a title shot against Godfather this week at Backlash, but okay. Al Snow appears and he whacks Holly with head, Godfather gets tossed back into the ring, Godfather wins via pinfall, and Goldust launches an attack after the bell, but he's easily taken out by the IC chomp. Backstage, The Undertaker's talking to someone on the phone. He tells whoever this is not to fail him. If the mission goes down the toilet, then this mystery man's gonna pay penance at the hands of the Lord of Darkness. Meanwhile, The Rock's getting his shoes shined, and we see the first ever It Doesn't Matter from The Great One. What's your name, honey? That hat doesn't even matter what your name is. The Rock says he's not going to hurt Stone Cold tonight, he'll do that at Backlash. Instead, Austin's just going to get buried, and I'm not sure how you can bury someone alive, presumably, without, you know, hurting them. Still, The Rock tells this lady to shut her mouth and continue shining The Rock's shoes.
Ken Shamrock vs The Big Boss Man happens next on Raw. On Nitro, Scotty Steiner answers Buff Bagwell's challenge. Steiner's got himself some Gainesville hooches and these ladies are going to call Scott the Big Bad Booty Daddy later tonight. He then says that Buff's ego's gotten so big that it's blurring his vision of reality. Nah, it's rich coming from Big Papa Pump, but okay. Scott says Buff was nothing but a male dancer who put on a g-string. Everyone in the NWO agreed that Bagwell didn't belong in the faction anymore. Scott got tired of Buff being his cheerleader. Buff's got some broken toys in the attic apparently. And Scott says real men don't wax their eyebrows and real men aren't Chippendale dancers. A lot of reliving the war viewers are currently hiding their wax right about now. The NWO was responsible for making Buff Daddy, so Buff should change his name to Boy Bagwell, and Scott's gonna enjoy beating Boy Bagwell up at Slamboree. The crowd chanted steroids at the end of the promo by the way, but we all know that Scotty's a genetic freak who came out of the womb looking the way he does. The Raw match began at ringside with Kenny Boy quickly taking control but a big boot and a spine buster gave Boss Man a brief advantage. Kenny tries to fight back but he falls victim to a clothesline. For a moment you wondered why this guy's getting a match against The Undertaker if the big Boss Man can handle him so easily. But then Shamrock fired back with a Hurricane Rana and what do you know, the fans are firmly behind Shamrock again. It wasn't that long ago when fans were chanting Shamrock sucks even when he stood on the apron during tag team matches. A belly to belly puts the boss man away, but then The Undertaker appears on the Titantron to send a message to the world's most dangerous man. The Undertaker can't believe that Shamrock would leave his sister in some rundown hotel while Ken's wrestling here tonight on Raw. The Undertaker knows the exact location of the hotel and he also knows the room number Rand's currently staying in, room 223 for those interested. And when the dead man says he's going to start knocking on Ryan's door, Kenny Boy runs up the entranceway to protect his sister once again. Have you ever had sex? I haven't felt great. It felt so good when I did it with my penis. A girl let me do it. It literally just happened. Having sex can make a nice man out the meanest. Oh, hey. The Main Street Posse join the commentary table for the next Raw match. There's something a little awkward about these guys that's really hard to explain, but it's almost like they're trying too hard to be confident. I don't know if this was by design, but I absolutely love it. It's Mankind vs Triple H next on Raw while Billy Kidman wrestles Raven on Nitro. That sounds like a great match. Rodney and Pete Guy say they kicked Foley's ass last week in the boiler room. Us plebs watching at home only saw the end of the fight. Triple H out wrestles Mick at the opening bell but a back elbow puts Hunter in his place. Rodney says he'd spit on someone like Mick Foley if he saw him walking around Greenwich as Triple H comes back with a few strikes in the corner. But it doesn't take long for Hunter to find himself in a tree of woe and Mankind drops a forearm. The back and forth action continues with Mick taking a hearty race knee which makes him fall out of the ring. The Main Street Posse love it when China body slams Mick on the floor and the Posse get a good look at Triple H annihilating Mankind at the announce table. Back inside the ring, Mick takes a suplex and a knee drop right to the face. Hunter then fish hooks Mankind's mouth, an act that sickens Rodney and Pete Gas. And the destruction of Mankind continues with a facebreaker knee smash followed by a clothesline to the outside. Mick takes a rough looking ring step bump next where his back also hits the ring post. Hunter thinks he's done enough to end it, but when he goes for a pedigree, Mankind counters and we see the classic headbutt to the bald spot. When Mick goes for Mr. Socko, China interferes and poor Mick gets his cactus completely jacked. This means we've got a DQ finish on Raw and yeah, I was kinda expecting this seeing as both men have pretty notable matches this week at Backlash. I didn't think we were gonna get a winner. The Main Street Posse and the rest of the corporation get in the ring and Mankind takes a beating. Hunter wants the pedigree Mick on a steel chair, but then Mick's Backlash opponent walks down to the ring to get a piece of Team Corporate. Triple H throws Test into the big show and this leads to one of the biggest choke slams I've ever seen in my life. The corporation get out of harm's way, Mankind grabs a microphone, and while Mick's grateful for the help he just received, he reminds Big Show that these two still have a boiler room brawl coming up this Sunday at Backlash. Show doesn't seem too bothered, so clear Clearly, the match is still on this week on pay per view. We then cut over to The Rock, who's bragging about what he did to Austin last week to someone on the phone. We don't find out who it is on the other side, but The Rock seems very happy with what he did, and he's also happy with his new 40 grand Lincoln Continental. Apparently, he's only got 200 miles on this baby. Switching over to Nitro, we see Billy Kidman taking the early lead with a head scissor takedown to Raven. Raven hasn't studied Kidman at all clearly as he tries to hit a powerbomb, but he is able to successfully deliver a front suplex. 
Raven should really know all about young Billy Kidman. Remember, Kidman was a smackhead in Raven's flock. Saturn watches on as Billy gets knocked out of the ring. Raven then retrieves a steel chair. He sets it up inside the ropes, and there it is, the drop to hold. Raven also pulls off a leg drop before setting Kidman up for a superplex, but Billy counters with a front suplex of his own. Kidman then goes for the shooting star press. Raven uses the chair as a shield and Kidman crashes on the steel. Just when the match was getting good, the horsemen interfere, and yeah, I'm pretty angry about this, not gonna lie. Malenko and Benoit launch an attack, but they get outnumbered when Rey Mysterio shows up. The horsemen retreat while Saturn tries to help Kidman to his feet, but Mysterio takes exception to this and we get a brawl between Raven, Saturn, Mysterio and Kidman. When Raven hits Kidman with an even flow DDT, the horsemen run back into the ring to take advantage, and that's how it ended. We're gearing up for a triple threat tag team match at Slamboree between these guys, so that's another match to look forward to at WCW's next pay per view. It's actually shaping up quite nicely. Billy Gunn vs Jeff Jarrett takes place next on Raw. On Nitro, it's Scott Norton vs Scotty Steiner. So Scott Norton's replacing Conan in this US title match. Steiner shakes Bobby Heenan's hand while telling Tony Schiavone to get a life kid, and our match begins with Flash Norton steamrolling through the US champion multiple times. After a timeout, Steiner tried an inverted atomic drop but Norton no sold it and Scotty took another clothesline. A low blow gives Steiner the break he needs. He throws Norton into the guardrail before bringing the match back into the ring, and we see Big Papa Pump's signature clothesline and elbow drop, but he runs into a big boot and he then falls victim to a sidewalk slam. We then see an embarrassing referee bump that has to rank up there as one of the worst ever, and our match ends with another low blow from Steiner followed by a belly to belly suplex. Steiner uses the ropes for a little leverage while going for a pin, and Big Papa Pump retains the United States Championship. On Raw, Billy Gunn wants the same stipulation that Road Dog got earlier on. If he beats Double J, then Debra has to release the beasts. To ensure those bad boys stay covered up, Owen Hart came out to lend Double J a hand, so the Road Dog ran down to take out Owen. Unfortunately, this didn't work out too well and Rhodey did more harm than good at first, but our match resumes with Jeff Jarrett briefly in control. Owen and Jeff try to cheat once again, but this time Road Dogg's able to take care of Owen. The match continues on with Jeff and Billy running into each other and they both get knocked down, and the roadie then interferes on Billy's behalf while the referee was busy. Deborah decides to get on the apron to distract Badass. Billy then decides to moon Deborah before hitting Jeff with a Famouser. BA covers Jared, Owen breaks up the cover, so it's a DQ finish. All four men brawl while Deborah begins removing her clothing. This leads to Billy getting distracted and Jeff covers Deborah up with his guitar. Owen and Jeff then walk away while planning to get revenge this week at Backlash. And that's how it ends, folks. Nothing special here from either show. Backstage, The Rockets asked if he'd like to do an interview with WWF.com. The Great One's too busy practicing his eulogy, so he tells this young fine lady to go get The Rock a little bite to eat instead. Uh, actually, no, he said this. Beat it, just beat it. No, The Rock ain't doing no interviews. Matter of fact, go get The Rock some food, you skank. Beat it, forget it. The Big Show vs. Viscera is our next match on Raw, while Big Sexy Kevin Nash cuts a promo on Nitro. So, big meaty men slapping meat on Raw's war, that's a lot of beef in that ring. Jim Ross says we won't be seeing any dropkicks in this match, and with a statement like that, I don't think Jim's watched The Giant in WCW all that often. Though, in fairness, Big Paul White was told to wrestle like a giant in WWF and keep the athletic stuff to a minimum. I highly recommend checking out Big Show's interview with Stone Cold Steve Austin on the Broken Skull Sessions. He talks candidly about his first few months in the WWF and how tough it was. He got a lot of shit from Austin himself for not laying it in during his matches, and guys like The Undertaker would constantly tell him how to work and how to sell. The Undertaker would end up taking Paul under his wing, but Paul said Taker was absolutely relentless on him. Big Viz takes a few chops and he replies by throwing all his body weight in the Big Show in the corner. This didn't look good at all. The Big Show fires back with a corner clothesline that did look good, and this gets followed up with a hip toss. Hey, at least the Big Show's trying here. Viscera goes right back to belly bouncing his opponent in the corner, and again, it looks really bad. The lights go out, the Undertaker's music plays, out comes the Prince of Darkness himself, and we get a stare down between Big Show and the Undertaker right in the middle of the ring. The crowd's pop 
popping for this one is neither man backs down and it's the undertaker who strikes first but he can't put the big man down. Show fights back but undertaker grabs him by the throat, big show returns the favour and we're now at a stalemate so viscera joins in and the big show gets outnumbered. McFoley runs down to help out Paul, the undertaker decides to leave while viscera ends up taking a standing sidekick from the big man. Foley then tells show that they're now all even as they head into backlash for the boiler room brawl and my takeaway from this is that there's definitely something here between the undertaker and the big show, smells like money. Kevin Nash sends a message to Hulk Hogan, Nash reminds everyone that Hogan's going under the knife and Kev promises to get revenge for Hulk by breaking DDP's back when the time's right. It doesn't matter who's gonna win the Nitro main event, Nash is gonna hurt Dallas. If Goldberg defeats Dallas tonight then Big Sexy's gonna face Goldberg at Slamboree. These two are one apiece so the score can finally get settled if Goldberg walks out of Gainesville tonight with the World Heavyweight Championship. The crowd then start chanting for Goldberg and Nash says the people here tonight have good taste, there you have it. Kevin Nash stays in the ring to face Ric Flair next on Nitro. On Raw, it's the Vince and Stephanie McMahon interview that was promised earlier on. Ric tries to intimidate Big Sexy but that doesn't work out too well, try again Nature Boy. A shoulder block from Ric fails to make Kevin move and Nash also no sells the Nature Boy's chops. Flair's definitely got his work cut out for him tonight. He gets a little advice from Double A before going for a lockup, but Nash forces the WCW president into the corner for a few knee strikes and Rick takes a big back body drop. Charles Robinson grants Rick a timeout, it's great stuff. Flair ends up bringing Nash to the corner for a few more chops and you can tell Big Sexy isn't a fan of these at all. He quickly throws Rick into the corner for more knee strikes and we see another back body drop from Kevin Nash. One more and you're in deep trouble sir. A big right hand leads to the Flair flop, Nash then measures Rick up for a few back elbows, Arn Anderson then gets involved by grabbing Nash's leg and our referee pretends to be temporarily blinded. Lil Nitch is so so slimy. Nash gets crotched on the ring post and Slick Rick chokes Nash on the canvas. Arn Anderson then gets in the ring and he lays the boots in. Charles Robinson's in absolutely no rush to help Kev out so this is pretty much a 3 on 1 situation we have here in the Nitro semi main event. Things go from bad to worse when Nash takes a low blow and Arn Anderson again interferes in the match. It looks like Kev has no hope at all as Rick begins working over the leg while Charles Robinson simply refuses to break things up but then Kevin shoves Rick to the mat and Nash is magically healed up from the beating he just took. A sidewalk slam only garners a two count. Rick finds himself on the apron and he takes a clothesline to the floor. We get a little action on the outside with Nash maintaining control and when we get back in the ring Slick Rick gets launched from the top rope. We see Nash's big boot before Double A gets knocked off the apron. The straps come down and Nash signals for the jackknife. The nature boy takes Big Sexy's finisher but Charles Robinson decides to leave the ring and he refuses to count Rick's shoulders to the mat. So gorgeous George attacks Robinson from behind and she takes Robinson's shirt. She gets in the ring, she counts the pinfall and Big Nash defeats Flair on Monday Nitro. Randy Savage is seen on the entranceway looking pretty happy at how all this turned out but we aren't done yet. It's time to kick off one of the most baffling stupid storylines in WCW history as a few white coats come down to ringside to take Ric Flair away. Remember Piper wanted Flair committed, David signed it off, he needs a break apparently and yes Ric Flair is going to spend time in a mental institute. Arn Anderson's confused, he thinks Ric's going to receive medical attention for the injury sustained in this match but the penny drops when Flair gets loaded in and the doors of the vehicle read Central Florida Mental Hospital. Rick freaks out and he tries to open the doors but he's going to get the help Roddy Piper thinks he needs and we will be seeing footage from Flair inside the Mental Institute. With Flair gone, Dusty Rhodes comes out to call the Nitro main event, Tony Schiavone says Rick's gone to the, and I quote, funny farm and yeah like it or not we'll check in on Rick next week. Michael Cole interviews Vince and Stephanie McMahon, we're going to hear what Vince thinks about his son's recent actions. Vince says he's always been proud of Shane, Vince missed a lot of his son's accomplishments because he was gone building a business but Vince does wish he could go back and share those moments with his kid. Last Monday Vince was not proud of Shane, the boy wonder became the man wonder and Vince didn't know how to take it and as for Stephanie, well she just doesn't know what to think. Stephanie feels like she doesn't know her brother anymore, she's very confused right now but Stephanie's thankful that Vince is looking after her and she hopes all this can blow over very soon. 
We then get a classic Vince McMahon moment when a production guy tells Mr. McMahon there's a problem outside. You son of a bitch! Take me to him! Come on! Go! 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 <laughs> Vince dashes down the corridor. He runs outside. He finds Midian, and Mr. McMahon beats the crap out of the former hog farmer. Vince isn't the most careful person when it comes to pulling punches, so you just know that a few of these shots definitely landed. Vince then tries to reverse a car into Midian, but clearly Midian's moved out of the way, and our segment ends with Midian jumping into the car and driving off into the night. Vince McMahon completely made this bit, from his reaction in the studio to the way he fights like an absolute lunatic. Good stuff right here on Raw's War. Before checking out our main events, there's another piece of business over on Raw that I didn't feel need covered in depth. Val Venus comes out to cut one of his regular promos, he's then joined by Sable who announces she's going to be in Playboy for a second time. Ivory and Dilo then come out to get a piece of Val and Sable, but Nicole Bass makes an appearance and Ivory gets taken out while Venus and Dilo fight on the outside. This was all put together just to announce Sable's back in Playboy. I know the original magazine did really really well in terms of sales, but this was the WWF being more concerned about promoting a business partner rather than promoting their upcoming pay per view. I get it by the way, it's business after all, some may even say it's serious business, but when watching this stuff back now, it's kinda hard to give a shit. Put on an Ivory vs Tory or Ivory vs Jackie match instead. Bass and Val Venus team up on Sunday Night Heat to face Ivory and Dilo by the way, and Big Nicole Bass becomes quite enamoured with the big Val Boski. Raw ends this week with the rock reading Stone Cold eulogy, on Nitro it's DDP vs Bill Goldberg. The world title match starts off brilliantly with both men shoving the referee down before showing some mutual respect. These boys are here to see who really is the best. Dallas gets shoved in the corner a few times before firing back with a quick arm drag and the crowd's absolutely loving it. The two square off again and this time Paige gets knocked out of the ring and when Dallas dashes back in for a diamond cutter attempt he again gets tossed into the ropes and this time DDP gets a bit tangled up. The two trade holds and it ends with a wrist lock takedown from Goldberg followed by a leg trip from Dallas, Paige then falls victim to a cross arm breaker, and when the two get up we get some miscommunication that causes DDP to trip up a little. Still, Goldberg makes the call to spear DDP right here and it was the right call, they got the crowd back immediately. Paige grabs Goldberg's trunks before throwing him into the bottom turnbuckle, a swing and neckbreaker leads to a pin attempt but Goldberg kicks out, Dallas then performs a belly to belly but again it's only a two, and Dallas brings it down to the mat with a front face lock. The crowd chant Goldberg's name as DDP gets slammed from a front chancery, the champ gets up and he tries again for a diamond cutter, but Goldberg plants DDP with a power slam and Goldberg gets a little frustrated when Paige kicks out. Paige delivers a head scissor takedown before taking to the skies with a diving clothesline, Goldberg fires back with a standing sidekick before lining up another spear, DDP won't move out of the corner so Goldberg tries a corner shoulder tackle, but Dallas dodges it before dropping Billy Boy with a diamond cutter. The crowd goes insane when Goldberg pars out at 2, DDP can't believe it, the commentators can't believe it and I can't believe it either. I don't know what it is but somehow Paige brings out the best in Goldberg because this has been a pretty good main event. Dallas gets desperate, he's got those brass knucks that don't look like brass knucks but we'll call them brass knucks anyway, but before he gets a chance to use them, both he and the referee get speared and Dallas gets jackhammered from the apron back inside the ring. There's no referee to count the fall, so Dallas gets up and he attacks Goldberg with those brass knucks. All sportsmanship has been thrown out the window. Paige then uses the ring steps and a steel chair to attack Goldberg's knee, he's trying to injure Goldberg the same way he injured Hogan, and this is a pretty merciless attack right here from DDP. A second referee comes out and he too gets taken out when trying to grab the chair, and just before Paige locks in a figure 4 around the ring post, Kevin Nash comes out to help Goldberg. Big Sexy is able to stop Paige from injuring Billy Boy, but he pays for it when Dallas hits him with the world title belt. Nitro fades out with both Nash and Goldberg looking pretty angry at what just went down, and that also means Nitro ends with no clear winner in the main event. I still thought this was good though and I think loads of people may have slept on this match, so check it out when you get a chance, the crowd absolutely loved it. So 
so The Rock's ready to give Stone Cold his funeral service over on Raw. Rather than me repeating what The Rock said, let's listen in and hear this touching eulogy from the Great One himself. Dearly Trailer Park Trash, we are gathered here tonight to celebrate the loss of the biggest foul mouth, beer swilling, finger gesturing, piece of monkey crap that has ever graced God's green earth. Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock bows his head in reverence as life's eternal question will finally be answered. Will your Rudy Pooh yeah. wow. fit in that damn casket? Unfortunately, Austin, it appears that Vision will have to wait until Backlash to become a reality. And since The Rock knew that your candy ass wasn't going to join him here tonight, The Rock brought something else here to bury. He's always get. Hey, wait a minute. That, that's a smoking skull bell! Throwing this off the bridge just wasn't good enough. Ah, uh ah! -uh. The Rock is gonna bury this piece of trash you call a belt six feet under and let it rot just like your damn career. Austin, you better smell what The Rock is cooking because at Backlash, the Brahma Bull is gonna come out snorting. At Backlash, the Brahma Bull is gonna come out spitting. And at Backlash, the Brahma Bull is gonna take his horns and spear them right in your candy ass. As The Rock holds the smoking skull belt high in the air, we can hear an engine revving in the background. It's no regular engine though, <laughs> oh no, Stone Cold's got himself a monster truck and he's only asking some guy where The Rock's new Lincoln Continental's parked. Austin proceeds to demolish Rock's car in spectacular fashion, he drives over the Lincoln twice before heading into the arena, and the Great One's hearse also gets destroyed by Stone Cold. The crowd go crazy as Austin parks his monster truck on top of the vehicle, and when Rock tries to attack Stone Cold, he fails miserably and Austin quickly gains the upper hand. It's Rock who ends up getting thrown in the grave and Stone Cold reclaims his smoking skull belt. He then celebrates by pouring one out for his dead homie, but Austin completely forgot about Shane McMahon. The boy wonder attacks Austin with a shovel, Stone Cold gets knocked out, and Raw ends with Shano holding the smoking skull belt high in the air. If you want to see what happens next, check out Backlash this weekend. Raw wins reliving the war this week, the Vince McMahon interview, The Undertaker squaring off with the big show, The Rock's funeral service, Raw was very, very entertaining this week. I enjoyed Nitro 2 by the way, the whole flair thing is definitely dumb but the cruiserweight and world title matches were both solid. Had WCW given Raven and Kidman more time, it would have been a way closer call this week. Raw's on 92 points, Nitro's on 71 and we've got 19 ties on the board. In the TV ratings, Raw scored a 6.1 and Nitro scored a 4.1. The In Your House name has now been retired as WWF presents the inaugural Backlash event this Sunday on Pay Per View. Please join me and we'll check out all the action including Mankind vs Big Show in a boiler room brawl, X-Pog vs Triple H, and of course the big WrestleMania main event rematch, Stone Cold Steve Austin vs The Rock. Thank you for watching guys, if you enjoy reliving the war you'd be doing me a massive favour by hitting the subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you all again this Sunday for the pay per view. Again thank you and please take care.